What's going on guys? Pomston87 here. And I'm here for the last time on this game, doing a voiceover commentary. And we are here for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the final race of the XRL Season 3 Championship. It will be a very interesting, a very exciting race in front of us. As it will be a 100% one, so that includes all the twilight from turn to uh, night time. Uh, so it should be pretty interesting. We did It's traditional as we did a 100% race uh, at the end of last season as well. But um, yeah, just see how we go really. But we have still got a championship fight on our hands. Red Bull is only 5 points behind Ferrari in the Constructors. So it's imperative we need to do a good result here. And we so we could challenge both Ferraris. So can we get it? Can we do it? Wish me luck guys. Alright, so we qualify P9 on the grid. It would be a very long race and, and f well, it would be a very quick edit as well. So I'm sorry if I did do leave parts out this race as I've got to try and agree to the 15 minutes maximum length of my editing software last week. But anyway, uh, we're right now as P9 on the grid behind ascending drive. We've got a fairly decent start trigger around the outside ascending into turn one. I want to take it nice and cautious, so we don't want to cause any instance. On the first corner, we do go around the outside ascending, but that, we had to leave room on the apex there, uh, and that's made us back off a little bit through the S's. But it hasn't lost us too much ground as there's loads of cars battling behind us. As we go through the first chicane there, and Neki just disconnects right in front of me. So that's very unfortunate for Neki there, um, lagging out on the first lap. And we take the hairpin way too cautiously. We, we were too, too kind really to the cars there, and we left way too much room. And that's lost me what? Three positions now. Uh, it's four, we're going side, side by side of 4 2. We, it's a drag race up the back straight. And looks like we're going to have the outside live. We take it not break nice and cautiously. Trying to hang around the outside of him, but um, he has a racing line. And we couldn't get past him there, so. Uh, down it's P10, fortunately, now. Um, Let's see if we can get pa back past the guys ahead. As um, Abu Dhabi isn't one of my favourite tracks, that's for sure. Uh, for the past two years, at least on F1 2013, just I, wa I wasn't quick around it, wasn't consistent, especially with the curbs and stuff. Um, but anyway, we're going to skip onto lap two as we're too much in a hurry to show all of lap one. As 4-4 2 goes wide at turn one, we try and go on the up inside of the S section, but we have to back out of it. And Aaron comes from nowhere and tries to go on the inside of him, but. He went slowly through the second S and we got back ahead of him. So that's good battling with the two Force Indias now. It's a very heated battle. And as we've got Aaron uh, behind us still. 4-4-2 uh, goes quite wide and exit, but we miss the apex of the hairpin. That's given Aaron a chance to challenge us. We're putting to Rich Mix, but he's I think he's got better traction as well. And he's going to long call it down our inside. It's a drag race again between me and Aaron. Uh, we've got the outside line once again for the chicane here, but we hold around his outside. We do it much more successfully this time than we did, did with full throttle. And we've got uh, the position ahead of him, but he's going to have a go down our outside now. There's no DRS. Uh, it's only lap two, but he's still right there. There was a bit of lag there, as weirdly. I thought he backed up. He's actually still right there. He's going to try and hold it around the outside. We're going side by side through this triple, uh, well, triple corner chicane. So it's still outside and he gets a position ahead of us. Very unfortunate really, but that was still very good battling. It's so going to lap three, we get to the purple sector and Aaron gets it all wrong with the first chicane and we get back up his inside. Yeah, but the perfect purple sector didn't really mean anything. As the first sector is very, very easy really, and very quite short. Going to lap five now, Aaron's making another attempt, so good battle between us so far. He tries to go on the outside of the chicane, we slide bit of contact, but nothing serious. We go wide on the exit to give him much more room. But he has got the position ahead of us, but we have got the DRS now as he was in front come the detection point. And he's going to defend to the inside, we hold around the outside, and might do a better less move, you know, a better all on um, Britain in 2012. Were we able to do it? It looks like we have just about been able to do it. Uh, he's trying to make a fight back up, coming to the left, but uh, we hold around his outside. So it's good battling between me and Aaron so far. Uh, according to lap 6, uh, he's diving down the inside, as you can, a bit of contact, I've probably turned it a little bit too early. But if it's just again as he holds around the outside of the second part. He's got the inside line coming back straight. 
We can have DRS as we, well, well, go side by side with him down the back straight yet. Will we be able to pull off the same move again, go around his outside? We break much later this time and go way too deep. That's put us offline through this chicane. And we lose the back end slightly and he flies up our inside, come in the left-hander. And he's finally got the position ahead of us. So that's good from Aaron there. And hopefully we can stick with him and try and catch up to the others. So come lap seven, we're trying to do just that. We're still a second behind him, but oh no. We've lost our front wing. We've curb glitched it off the second apex of that chicane there. Uh, and we've lost our front wing. That's spoiled our strategy. It's lost us an enormous amount of time as we're trying to limp back to the pits now. Do the whole of the third sector of our pit. Of our front wing. And in, well, total time of probably lost about 10 seconds for the rest of the field. And it got, got us passed by Connor straight as well. And plus the time that it takes that I did onto the pit stop for a front wing change. Oh, it's a disaster now. We were going to do a two-stop strategy for this race, but it looks like it will have to be a free, a free stop as we went for a set of option tyres. So I just wanted to be able to go on the fastest tyre to catch, catch back up to everyone. But it te takes until lap 17 for us to move out of last place. Uh, it's only because 442 has made a pit stop. Uh, so we're now into P11. Uh, and it takes us until lap 21 before we've actually caught up to someone on track. And that's Connor Strait who hasn't made a pit stop yet and is still on his prime tyres which he started his race on. Uh, but he's losing a lot of time now. So it's, we've caught right to the back of him. That's about 20 seconds we've caught up by, to him. Like tw 10 laps or something like that. Crazy. Uh, as we're using DRS, they're going to fly up his inside in the back straight. Very easy move. He hit the apex and we've got the race in line. And uh, will he be able to make an attempt to double DRS? But I think it's too far behind. And uh, open into Rich Mix just in case. But yeah, it's too far behind. Coming up 22. Should be thinking about pitting soon for the. Prime tiles, I think, but we do the same thing, but this time we just about managed to keep it out of the barrier. It's very close, but that is basically telling us we need to get off these tiles right now as they are pretty much ruined. So that's 15 laps on the option tiles, it isn't bad. And if we stretch out these primes long enough, we might be able to do another, set, another option stint to the end, which would be pretty good. But we came into the pits at the same time as Conrad Strait, and we will emerge just about ahead of him. But he will be on the option tyre, so he will probably be quite a lot quicker than us. So we've got to try and hold him back uh, throughout the rest of this race. As we'll probably be racing him uh, for the last couple of points. And come lap 27, he's right on our tail. As we make a mistake and lock up, come that right hip in. And he goes right now outside in the third, third hip protector, but we're still there. We go side by side. I think there's a little bit of contact, but I gave him enough room there. And... There shouldn't be any need for any repositions there. He tried to make a move on the outside there, but uh, couldn't manage it. And after that point, we actually pulled away from Conrad. I finally found some pace in this race on on the prime tyres. And by that 36, we closed like a, I think it was a 10 second gap to 442 ahead, who goes very wide to the exit of the hairpin. And this should be a nice, easy move with the DRS and Rich Mix. Uh, quite similar to the move that we did on Conrad Strait. Both on the same tyre, but we have so much strength on our speed and we fly down his inside. Break quite nicely. We go a little bit deeper than we did with Connor Strait. It's given 442 a chance to back up. He taps to my side pod, but I didn't actually change my line. I just I had the racing line and he hit it side of me. I don't think he lost too much. Yeah, he didn't side pod glitch or anything though, which is good. Uh, so I didn't feel any need to give any position back. Now coming up 40, we haven't managed to extend our prime stint for long enough to put on the option tyres. We were in 8th briefly as uh, Sending Jive made a pit stop ahead of us. I think he's on the prime tyres and is aiming to go to the end of the race. We are now on the option, so we're on the faster tyre. We will be quite far behind him, but we will try and close the gap down to Ascending. As shoot, his tyres will probably go off by the end of the race. And, well, of course, as I said, we are on the quicker tyres. So going through the pit lane exit now. It's quite, quite a beautiful pit lane exit, really. It's very different going diving underneath the track. As we emerge, actually just only a couple of seconds ahead of full throttle, so we've still got a threat from behind as well. Uh, so I've got to make sure he doesn't um, catch and pass us. So we've got 19 seconds to ascending drive. Will we be able to catch him? And we've got like 4 seconds to full throttle to as well, so it's, so it's not over yet. Uh, now, four, four, um, sorry for lap 43. Uh, we're getting blue flags as my teammate and race leader, King Bowler, has finally caught up to the back of us. I always knew there's a possibility I'd be a lap to this race. And that has become the case. But unfortunately, 
that is no good news. As it will cost me time to ascending drive, probably a couple of seconds there. So that's more work needs to do, and probably cost us even more time as he uh, gets it gets it wrong in the third sector, and that's basically blocking him. Um, well, blocking my progress there. As I go over to back him through the rest of the third sector, but we're still closing our ascending drive. Come lap 49, and we set a personal best, a personal best of the race of 142.6. Only 6.9 seconds now. With um, ah, it's going to be four laps left of the race as we go into lap 54 because I got lapped. Come lap 51, we're going to be lapped by the second place man, unfortunately. So that's going to cost us even more time. And that's Greek Master Knight. I know we let past on the straight. Quite easily. Um, luckily, that will give us the arrest of the second straight, but that still costs us quite a bit of time. Now, come the end of lap 52, we've got three cars ahead of us. One of them is ascending drive. The other two is the two leaders. So I think during the rest of this, during the start of the stint, King Bowler has been holding up ascending drive a real tree. It's time to close it right on the back of him. But come lap 53, there's been contact between Greek Master and King Bowler. As King Bowler's lost out, and it's going really slowly. We got DRS as well. I don't think Ascending Jive has, so we're going to be right on the back of Ascending Jive come the end of the straight. Uh, we will try and make a movement, we're too far back, but he goes very slowly through that apex. And we're going to a little tap on the back, as it's just taking nice and careful over the curbs. We don't want another spin into the wall. And we lose it on traction out of the left hander. Let's put King Ball on my teammate, um, who's in second place now, right, right on the back of us. And he dives on the inside of the right hairpin there. So, it's very crucial. And he cuts the corner for good measure. So, we're battling unexpectedly with the second place, man. We didn't get any blue, flag, blue flags though, which is a bit weird. But he's now trying to get past Ascending Drive down the pit straight. He's going to attempt to go around the outside of Ascending. That slowed them both down. That's given me another chance to get past Ascending Drive onto the what will be the final lap of the race. I'm trying to make move around the outside of the long left. But that won't work. And we had to back out of it. Was that would have just resulted in the side pod glitching me spinning off to the barriers. And we're still trying to find it, but we unfortunately get caught in the curb, and that's lost a lot of time as we went out on the marbles. It's very unfortunate, as I was trying to line up and move, going, going down to the DRS straight. But unfortunately, that doesn't look like that will happen now, as Ascending is still battling with King Bowler. So, I think this is team tactics here for us to try and win the championship uh, against Ferrari, as I'm not sure where both Ferraris are in this race, but I bet they're quite high up in the race order. As uh, King Ball is again blocking the sending drive. This is pretty interesting now. As we're going to have a good run. We've got a good exit of that chicane. We've hit a rich mix. We've got DRS. He will have DRS, DRS as well. We've got Shannon Spade. He blocks the inside very late. We already had the inside line. And again, bit of contact. But we're going to dive down his inside. Very clean move. We block him off a bit. He can't make the switch back there. We get both Apex with perfection. I think he tried to tap us out of the way there. But uh, we resisted any um, attack by ascending there. And we've got the position need to park the bus for the rest of this last lap. I actually forgot at the time that um, the lap was going on to lap, lap 54 because we got lapped. I thought there's still one lap of the race left but we've still got to park the bus and um, we go quite wide onto the curb. That's given us sending a chance to go around the outside here but we give them just about enough contact and we have the inside line so it should be safe and we just about come across the line. Take 8th place ahead of sending just behind King Bowler, so it was both Red Bulls together across the line. And actually, it's a weird glitch there by Comas, as a put Ascending Drive third, although it didn't finish third. I think because it was lapped and the game didn't recognise us or like that, I don't know. But uh, if you look in a couple of seconds, the game does rectify it and puts them ninth behind me. So that was a good final race, guys. But unfortunately, when it comes to Constructors Championship, Ferrari managed to beat us by three points, I think it was in the end. So unfortunately we couldn't get the strict constructors, it's probably my fault really, I mean if I hadn't had that spin I might have been able to get final chicane and get 7th, but who knows really. But either way that was an exciting race to end the Season 3 XRL Championship off on F1 2014. I've had a really good season and I hope that shows in the season montage I'll be releasing very soon. So I hope you guys enjoyed that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this race. And I will see you on F F1 2015. So see you then. Palms out.